welcome you this afternoon to this water baptismal service. It's good to see everyone here today gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's a good day to come to the waters and be baptized. God has blessed us with a beautiful day. Amen. Are you glad to be here this afternoon? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. If you serve Jesus Christ this afternoon, why don't you worship Him and praise Him and give Him your all today. If you don't know Jesus Christ this afternoon, what a day this is. Uh, what an opportunity for you uh, to make, uh, make uh, your life is this day. Amen. I want to recognize a few people here this afternoon. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor and Mrs. Burton are here from Morton's Arbor. We want to welcome them uh, to this service today. Pastor and Mrs. Pittman are here. Pastor Pittman's going to be helping a little later in the service. Hallelujah. Pastor and Mrs. Foster, they're on their way from um, Chain Johnson's. They should be here very shortly. And joining us this afternoon, Pastor and Mrs. Langdon are here. I want to greet them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have a wonderful service today. Encourage you to put yourself in and uh, worship the Lord. Uh, we're going to have some special singing a little later. And then the preaching of the Word of God uh, later this afternoon. And then we're going to be uh, baptizing people in water today. And we have a number of people that are going to the waters today. Uh, some of them are newborn babes in the Lord. And some of them have been on this journey for a long time and feel that this is the hour in which they should go through the waters of baptism. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. And I want us to sing that chorus, Never Before Has Anyone Loved Me Like Jesus. Amen. There's something about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Never before has anyone cared for me like him. Never before has anyone died for me on Calvary. Never before, praise the Lord, uh, never again. So let's stand, uh, let's bring our hands together and worship uh, as we praise uh, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Never before has anyone loved me like Jesus. Oh, never before.
sin and we're going to sing another chorus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Are you glad that God has saved you? Uh, Jesus Christ has set you free today. Amen. Let's sing that chorus. Uh, and then after which I'm going to ask Pastor Burton if he would come and lead us in prayer today. And may God bless uh, this uh, open air and water baptismal service today. Let's sing it together, bro. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Afternoon. Uh, 
Hallelujah. In His sanctuary today. In the great outdoors, let's praise Him today. Let's worship the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. Glory to your name, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Burton. Hallelujah. Come and praise him. Praise God. Isn't this a wonderful atmosphere this afternoon? Hallelujah. Amen. My mind goes back to 32 years Hallelujah. ago when I stood on the beach. Just a young uh, man. Just got saved. Uh, but God's presence is just as real this afternoon. How many love Him? Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the privilege. We count it a privilege, Lord, to be able to come into your divine presence. We count it a privilege, Lord, to be able to come out into the open air and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we just ask today for the anointing of your Spirit to rest upon this congregation, Lord, upon the singing, upon the music, Lord, upon the candidates that will follow you today to waters of baptism. Lord, we pray for your servant that will stand with your word as he goes forth again. This afternoon we're confident, Lord, according to your word, that it will not return unto you void. We ask, O oh God, that there are those today that are here that have not yet made up their mind about following the Lord. Father, I just pray that this will be the evening, this will be the afternoon when the Holy yeah. Spirit will quicken yes. the hearts Amen. and they will be willing to take up the cross yes. today and follow you yes. to waters of baptism. Yes. Father, we just ask that the presence of God would fill the atmosphere in this evening and Lord, that your people that will be called by your name will worship you in spirit and in truth, we just ask today, Lord, should there be one, Lord, in this gathering does not say that do not know you as your personal Savior. I pray, Lord, that this will be the afternoon when the Spirit of God will speak to the hearts, and Lord, they will answer to the call of the Spirit, make matters right with you, Lord, and for that day when you return, Lord, just anoint us for the fresh anointing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing the chorus paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Free from sin. Free to live. Now I am. And it reads on the page where my sins were written down. What's there? Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Let's bring our hands together. And after we sing this through a few times, hallelujah. Brother Danny Bath is going to minister in song, and then his wife uh, and Marilyn is going to join him. Hallelujah. Let's sing that uh, chorus a few times, please. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, free from sin, free to live.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Melanie, for that song. Let me invite Pastor Pittman to come, and he's just going to uh, share a few words of testimony. Hallelujah. It's good to have him and his wife with us this afternoon, joining in this service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Roberts. He just asked me to do this, but it's always a privilege to be able to witness for such a one as our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We just want to praise Him and give Him glory. Now, I don't have a long, a long time. I could be here today talk, talking to you about my personal testimony. Just to let you know that I was born in a Pentecostal home with a great praying mother. But uh, I struggled and, uh, and would resist giving in to the Lord. I didn't want to get saved. Uh, from a young uh, child, I could sense the call of God, but I resisted, ran, and did everything that I could to get away from the call of God. And I want to thank God for His grace. I want to thank Him for His mercy, because when I needed God and went to Him, He did not say no. I said that to Him many, many, many times. And so I drifted into a lifestyle that wasn't uh, you know, very pretty or acceptable to God or my parents or the church. One day, uh, a Sunday night, we were attending my fiance. she was then. She's my good wife now. We were attending a church. We were invited to a church in, in Toronto that used to be called the West End Revival Center. And we're sitting in that church that night, and the Holy Spirit spoke plain to me, very plainly, as if, same as I was speaking to you this afternoon. And the altar call was given. The regular pastor wasn't preaching. They had somebody invited in a former pastor. I don't know what he preached on. I don't know what he said. But I sat there in the back of that church. And the altar call was given. And the crowds began to gather around an altar. The Holy Spirit said, If that were a train going to heaven, you have one seat left to catch. And I ran toward that altar. I know that when I stood there that evening with... It's because I came out of the hippie culture, so I stood there with long hair and, you know, the lifestyle and the, the kind of dress. And I'm sure that many that stood around said, huh, he won't last very long. They would have been right if I had to depend upon my own abilities and strength. But thank God, the grace of God that saved me that night kept me up to now. I still love him. And I thank him for today. I want to challenge anybody here today who was... You know, holy out of God, either on water baptism or, the, or salvation or the call of God. It's not going to pay because one day you're going to have to surrender. His grace will sufficiently carry you through. God bless you. I challenge you to follow in water baptism this afternoon. God bless you, Pastor Roberts. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pittman. Hallelujah. At this time, Jamie Rice is going to come and he's going to... Uh, Minister in a song this afternoon. May God bless you. Thank God I'm saved under the blood. I will follow the ways of my Lord every day. All through the years that I live. I'm only human and sometimes I stray But I know my Lord will forgive The Lord is the way and the light of the world His kingdom a promise reward I want to be with Him when this life is over So I follow the way of my Lord, I know I must follow Him on till the end, if everlasting life I'm the game, for on that day when life's book is read, I want it to carry my name, 
praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stand again and we're going to sing one more chorus and then our, uh, our special guest this afternoon is going to come and minister the Word of God. Let's sing that chorus, I Want More of Jesus. I want more of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you want more of Him today? More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I want more of His great love. So rich and full and free, I want more of Jesus. So I'll give Him more of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's bring our hands together. Hallelujah. I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus. Than I ever had before. I want more of His great love, so rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus. Give Him more of me. I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I want more of His great love, so I want more of Jesus. Give me more of me. I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I want more of His great love, so rich and full and free. afternoon to invite our, our special guests with us uh, all the way from St. John's. Uh, he had to take a ferry crossing to get here today, so I'll make you think of where he was, And uh, but I'm glad he's here this afternoon, our general superintendent. He's a man that has a passion for the things of God and all the, the, the correspondence that I have received from him. And the last number of years since he's been our superintendent, uh, I want to tell you he has a desire to see this movement uh, on fire by the Holy Spirit. And he has a great passion for the Holy Spirit and, and the things of the Holy Spirit. So this afternoon I'm going to invite uh, our general superintendent, Paul Foster, uh, to come and minister the Word of God. It's good to have his wife, Margaret, with us this afternoon. She kind of headed for the shade. And that's okay. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's good to have them. Let's uh, give them a warm welcome to Hillgrade this afternoon by bringing our hands together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Pastor, for those kind words today, and it's a privilege and a joy for Margaret and I to be here this afternoon for this open-air water baptismal service. This has been a wonderful weekend thus far for us. We spent the day on Change Island yesterday, enjoyed the culture there and some of the old traditions and visited some of the old artifacts that brought back memories of past years, and we enjoyed the service and speaking there this morning. And wouldn't you know it, the ferry was late today. So we apologize for getting in a little bit late, but nevertheless, it's a great joy to, to come. And as we just came down the highway there, looked over and saw the, the crowd gathered here, it was a wonderful, wonderful sight. For me today, being a pastor for the past 33 years and having the opportunity of, of ministering where we are now, to, to gather in any place like this and see God's people gather together, it's... It's always exciting, it's always encouraging to see people gathered in the name of Jesus and sensing an excitement about serving Jesus and being His follower, taking up their cross and following the Lord. <coughs> always enjoy the open-air baptismal services when we were pastoring, and two weeks ago I had the privilege of speaking at the one at Little Burnt Bay in Embry. It was not an afternoon like this. Some of you were there. And I can tell you that I was soaked right through the time I finished preaching. It rained pretty hard. But we had a good day. And the Lord willing, next Sunday afternoon, we're going to be in Burlington, the Middle Iron, for a baptismal service there. So things are happening right around the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. People are accepting Jesus and being baptized in water. And it's an exciting day to be alive and to be a part of the ministry. As I said, it's a great joy to be here today to share this service and this baptismal service. And to see the pastors and the folks from the different churches in the area, I want to tell you when we work together as a team, God can use us. Yeah. We want to be a witness together that the unity of the Spirit brings and God's presence brings. This afternoon I want to share with you very familiar verses of Scripture from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 37 to 41. And let's read them together again. It says, when the people heard this, Peter had just preached to them about Jesus Christ, the Lord whom they had crucified and who had, whom God had raised up. And it says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. I think that would be appropriate words for our world, our society, our nation this afternoon. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. It goes on to say, those who accepted his message. I want you to know it was more than his message. It was the message of Jesus Christ to repent and be baptized. And we'll see in a moment how he dealt with that. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Mustn't that have been an exciting day? You imagine 3,000 souls here this afternoon and they were present committing their lives to Jesus Christ and being added to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, says to us, and I won't read them all, but it says, Whosoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Verse 19, the words of Jesus was, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. I want to leave with you a straightforward command today from the Word of God. The command that so simply says, but yet so authoritatively says, repent and be baptized. You see, today there are many evangelical Christians like ourselves who believe in the full gospel message of the Scriptures. We believe today that there is repentance, 
There is the command to be baptized in water. There is the baptism of the Holy Ghost for every believer according to Acts 2 and 4. And there is also the fact that Jesus Christ is the healer of our sickness and He is the coming King of kings and the Lord of lords. The full gospel message of the scriptures. Contained in that full gospel message of the scriptures, there are two ordinances of the church. When we speak of ordinances that were given, we, we realize that there were two commandments that were given and ordained by God for every believer in Jesus Christ to follow. Notice I said every believer, not some specific group of believers or denominations. Well, I'm going to share with you today what the Bible says, not just what Pentecostal believers say, but what the Bible says. Two commandments given and ordained by God. One is one for which we have a scriptural background in Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and 1 Corinthians 11. Just to give you four instances of scripture for a foundation, one ordin ordinance is what we refer to as the Lord's Supper. When Jesus said, when you do this, you do this in remembrance of me, of my suffering, my death, and my resurrection. And we do that on a regular basis. We remember the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us. The other ordinance given by God in the scriptures is water baptism. And it's what we're dealing with this afternoon as we also deal with repentance. The commission of the Lord Jesus Christ to the church, to all evangelical believers, and to all believers for that matter, is found in Mark chapter 28 and Mark chapter 16. Jesus in both instances of scripture tells us to go, to go out into the world. He tells us to teach all nations, to preach the gospel, teaching them to become disciples or learners or followers or ones whose lives are disciplined by the Lord. Then he says teaching them, causing them to be disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Lord's commission to his disciples and to all of us was that we would teach people to observe or to follow all things, not some things, but all things, he said, whatsoever I have commanded you. Friend, there is an obligation today upon myself as a believer and a preacher of the gospel, and every believer and preacher of the gospel. There is an obligation upon us to say to people that Christ's call is to observe all things. And I underline the word all today, and I give it a great emphasis. Jesus said, all things whatsoever I commanded you. Friend, when you think about repentance and water baptism, I am not talking today about an option that a person can decide to take or to leave. There are many things we make decisions on in life that we have options on. When you get your car insurance or renew it, you have options regarding liability, collision coverage, fire, theft, and glass coverage and whatever the case might be, there are options that you have. When you book an airline ticket, there are options that you have. How much you're going to pay for it, what airline you're going to take, what airport you're going to fly out of, and so forth. But when it comes to repentance and water baptism, there are no options that are provided. Jesus gave us the commands. The apostles speak sincerely of what Jesus said and tells us that it's a must. It is part of the full gospel which cannot be evaded or ignored, and it is near to the heart of God. You see today, the Holy Bible is the authority, and nobody can or should deny the cardinal doctrines that are in the Holy Bible. You go to any Christian denomination this afternoon, you will find that in every denomination, we all read and we all suggest that we are to follow the same Holy Bible, the Scriptures. Well, the same Holy Bible that we all declare allegiance to is the authority today, and I want to share with you what the authority says. When we look at the baptism of Jesus Christ Himself that the sister referred to before she sang today, we find its record in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. It was an occasion where Jesus came to where John was baptizing believers. As Jesus came down to the river Jordan, Jesus said to John, John, I have need to be baptized of thee. John said, but Lord, you are the Lord. Why do I need to baptize you? Can I do it? I am unworthy. I'm not even worthy, Lord, to do of the, the laces or the fastenings of your sandals. But Jesus says, John, it behooves us that I should be baptized. 
And we find that Jesus walked with John down into the waters of the Jordan River and he was baptized by John. Jesus himself gave the example of water baptism. He personally commanded repentance and water baptism, but he sent a strong message with the disciples and the apostles. Not only was it a word he gave them to go and do it, but he had also done it by, by, done it by example. Friend, Jesus had made a choice. He had made a decision. He came down from Galilee to the Jordan, and he said to John, I want to be baptized of you, John. Now Christ himself was perfect. He was sinless. He was righteous. Yet he submitted himself to the plan that was put in place by God and he himself. And he set for us an example. And it pleased God, for we see the witness of the Holy Spirit on the occasion. Jesus said to John, For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now righteousness, my friend, is holy, obedient living. We are made righteous by the act of God imputing unto us righteousness through His Son, Jesus Christ. We are made righteous, but we also, after we've been made righteous, follow the ways of righteous living, and we do everything that we can to witness to the world. I am redeemed and I have been made righteous by and through the Lord Jesus Christ. I will live holy, I will live obedient, and I will live as a witness for Jesus Christ. So Jesus said to John, Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. I want you to notice that he went down and he was baptized. And the Bible says that then Jesus went up out of the water. Which signifies to you and me today that water baptism is by complete immersion. And it has some significant truths which I will deal with in a moment. When Jesus walked up out of the water, the Bible says that the Spirit came like a dove. And the message of the Father by the Spirit was, This is my Son whom I love, and in whom I am well pleased. Jesus gave us the example. Let me go back for a moment and say to you that repentance must come before water baptism. Now why must a person repent? Jesus preached it, John preached it, Peter preached it. We have preached it for almost a hundred years in Newfoundland and Labrador. Others preached it even before we came. Why does a person need to repent and then to be baptized? Well, the Bible simply tells us simple truths, and, the, and they are these. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all, not some, but all, have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of our sin, the Bible says, Remember, it just told us we have all sinned. And then the wages or the payday of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Isaiah, when he prophesied of the coming Messiah and Savior, in Isaiah 53 and 6 said, All we like sheep have gone astray. Romans chapter 3, 10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. The psalmist David in the Psalms recognized that in sin he was conceived and he was born. Romans chapter 5 teaches us, that because of the sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that sin then passed upon all men. And one of the sure signs of it was that death had all, had too passed upon all men. And understand in your community today there is a witness to us that, that death that came as the result of sin is still something that happens. And one day even over it we are going to be victorious. But you see, the sin that we were born in, the sin that's part of us because of Adam's sin, that sin separated us from God. Now, God was holy. He was just. God loved us, but there had to be a provision through a sacrifice of His Son so that the, His wrath could be appeased, that we could have peace with God the Father again through our Lord Jesus Christ. So God provided through Christ a way for us. And then He gave us a way that through Christ we could be saved. That we could repent and accept the Lord Jesus as our Savior and accept God's provision. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 tells us that if, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and that you are saved. Friend, there are choices to be made here this afternoon. The first choice is repentance. This can only be done as one sees and hears and understands and believes. Repentance comes first, and then you must be baptized. Repentance is sorrow for sin. It's turning about face from your sin. 
is deciding to walk in a new way of life. And folks, I want to emphasize that here today, that when you repent and accept Jesus, when you decide to become His disciple, when you decide to be baptized in water, you have decided, I am going to live a brand new life, completely different from what I've ever lived before. It's a different life that I lived in sin. And you're making a statement that Jesus Christ is the one I've accepted as my Savior. And I am going to be identified with Him. Folks, today, I want to suggest to you that it's not popular at this moment, even in our nation, to be identified with Jesus Christ. I would suggest to you, and I, I, I'm feeling the words writing an article this fall in Good Tidings, in good tidings regarding it, but you know, somehow I feel that to be a Christian is going to involve persecution in the near future. Not only in the lands where persecution right now is happening to the church, but I somehow foresee that it's going to happen in the nation of Canada. It's going to happen in the, in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. But there is a people today, and there will be a people who are going to say, I have decided to follow Jesus, repent of my sins, and be a born-again, blood-washed Christian. Amen? Now, I made that choice to be that Christian. But I'm also going to make that choice that baptism is going to follow my repentance. As I said earlier, it's not an option, but it's a command. It's something that we should follow. We should teach it to our children, to our youth, to our adults, until they desire the experience. For you see, friends, when you live as a repentant, righteous person, obedience is a proof of your love to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now some people think we do this because we're loyal to a denomination. Or they think that, you know, if you don't do it, then you're betraying a denomination. Folks, I want to tell you there's a greater call than a denominational call here this afternoon. Obedience is a proof of your, of your, of your relationship and your love to the Lord Jesus Christ. It recognizes the Lordship of Jesus in your life. People give the Lord 10% of their income and their offerings because they're a disciple and they recognize that He's Lord. And there's other ways that they follow Him. But water baptism is another evidence of obedience and His Lordship over us. We come to a place where we say, I am His disciple. You see, we can hear God's Word and not listen to it and not do it. But even Christians sometimes don't realize it that when they hear and don't do in obedience to what the Lord says, we are deceiving ourselves and nobody else. For the Lord has called us. You see, today, many of us have heard the gospel for a long time and we know what we should do. There's a man by the, by, who was called the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. And the word tells us that this eunuch was on his way back from the great city one day in his chariot. While he was on his way back to his home, he was reading the book of Isaiah. Now we know a little about the book of Isaiah, how in chapter 53 it speaks of the Messiah, the Christ who would come and his sufferings and so on. And no doubt the eunuch was reading in that portion. At the same time, the Spirit took Philip and brought him to the place where the Ethiopian eunuch was in the wilderness. When Philip got there, the Bible says that Philip began. And with that very passage of Scripture, Philip told the eunuch the good news about Jesus Christ. I believe he went on to expound what the eunuch had been reading in the book of Isaiah. I believe that as Philip was teaching in the gospel and the message about Jesus, he must have told him about the baptism of Jesus. Because it says in Acts chapter 8 that as they traveled along the road, they came to some water. I don't know what body of water it was, but no doubt it was colored and shivering like the water is here beside us this afternoon. They came to some water and the eunuch said, Philip, Look, here is water. What? Why shouldn't I be baptized? Now, can you imagine you hear the gospel for the first time? First time you heard about Jesus, his suffering, death, resurrection. Heard about Jesus' baptism. For the very first time, he wasn't gospel hardened. But the very first time, and he comes to the first drop of water he sees and says, Philip, why shouldn't I be baptized? Oh, man, that's powerful. 
I'd like to have some days like that now when the converts will say, why can't I get baptized right now and, and follow Jesus in obedience? And the eunuch said to the driver, he said, stop this chariot. And the eunuch stepped out of that chariot that day. And Philip stepped out with him. And the Bible says they went down into the water. And the Bible says without reservation that Philip baptized him. And then they came up out of the water. Hallelujah. Oh, what a day that was. I'd like to have some days like that in my life. When the Spirit would take me to a unit and tell him that Jesus loves him and that he can be saved and be baptized. You know what Philip said to the eunuch when he said, What doth hinder me from being baptized? Philip said to him, If you believe, there's nothing that hinders you. But you say, Pastor Foster, I'm hindered today. Well, what is it? Is it affiliation? Family? Your peers? Is it a phobia or a fear? Or even a sickness? Or is it apathy that hinders you? Is it disobedience that hinders you? Is it the fact of cross-bearing that hinders you? Is it the fact of being identified with Christ? I was 11 years old when I was challenged to be baptized in water. It was May of 1965. And don't do any arithmetic now, just listen to me. But in May 1965, I was 11 years old. Of the age, it was the second Sunday in the Ewan Tabernacle of Road Walk Lane in the new church. We had been in revival. Sunday night, the pastor at a baptismal service preached. The place was jam-packed solid as they used to be in those days. And, and uh, I was sitting there as an 11-year-old hearing him preach about water baptism. Now, I'd gone that night with my mom. I had no plans to be baptized, but I'm sitting there and I'm 11 years old and I'm hearing Jesus calling me. <coughs> baptismal service was almost done. There was 53 baptized that night and I was number 53. 53 into one service. They were good times. I was going out in the foyer, about to go home, hadn't been baptized, and mother said, my son, what's wrong? You know, it's amazing how mothers know. They can see through you, and when you don't say nothing, they still know what you're saying. And She said, what's the trouble? I said, Mom, I, I really feel I, I should be baptized and follow Jesus. She said, you do? I said, yeah. I didn't have to convince her. She believed in it. So folks, they took me downstairs. In those days, we were prepared... You know, it was indoor water baptismal service. But the WM used to prepare. They'd have extra clothes around, you know, in case somebody didn't come prepared. Now, the day you didn't come prepared, go out there and get baptized anyway. You don't need extra clothes today. But they, they took me downstairs, and, they, and I was never a small boy. But I've yet to reach the size of pants they put on me that night. A size 52 men's pants wrapped me up in a pill. And I went up and I was baptized in water. But the significant thing about it was after my mother said to me, How do you feel? I had not heard anybody explain water baptism to me in depth. But I said this to my mother. I said, Mom, I feel like when the pastor baptized me that I died and came back to life. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Learn sometime later what that meant. That's what I want to talk to you about the closing part of this message today. When you're baptized, what are you being identified with? What are you being united with? What are you saying? What witness is your life giving? I said already it's an open confession of your faith that you are saying I'm a new creation. It's also an answer of a good conscience towards God. I, I preached in an open-air baptismal service two weeks ago. Some of you were there. There were some Christians in that crowd who had been saved for years and years and years and had, had not been baptized and walked away that afternoon not baptized. And Sunday night at camp, I was greeting people as they were coming in through the doors as I tried to do sometimes and and this fellow who had for years, and I, he'd heard me preach it many times as well as other, as other pastors, he walked away that afternoon without being baptized. You know, when he walked in that night, he wouldn't speak to me. I don't think he had anything against me. I think that his conscience wasn't clear. When you're baptized, you'll have a clear conscience. You walk away here today as, out of here as a witnessing Christian and, and you're not baptized in water, you're not going to walk away with a clear conscience, let me tell you. And I tell you that lovingly. But when I'm baptized, what happens? Folks, I am, I am united and identified with Jesus Christ 
I won't read all of Romans 6 or Galatians 2, but I will relate to you that these thoughts are found in these scriptures. First of all, I am identified with the crucifixion of Jesus. You see, what happens is that when you repent, the believer has been crucified with Christ. Our sins have been nailed to the cross. Paul said, I am therefore crucified with Christ. He said, I have new life. He said, the old man is put to death. I live a new way. And what you're saying is that I have been crucified with Christ. And water baptism is an outward symbol of this. That I have put to death my own plans. My own way of living. My own selfish desires. And as the lady that sang said in her introduction. We die to that little bit of ourselves. We are dying to the flesh. And we're saying I am crucified with Christ. My sins are nailed to the cross. And I'm alive in Him. When I baptize the water, I'm also identified with the death of Jesus Christ. This probably relates to what I said about when I was 11 years old, but didn't fully understand. You see, Christ died for us because of sin. We died to sin because of Christ. The believer reckons himself now dead indeed unto sin. And water baptism is that outward symbol. Yes, I have died with Christ, and I am dead unto sin. Sin is not going to rule over me. It's not going to have dominion. But you say, Pastor Foster, that means that that's the truth. Then I'll never make a mistake or cause myself or, or decide on my own to, to make a mistake or to, or to sin again. No, that's not what I'm saying. You see, any of us can have a moment when we fail, when we sin. That's why John wrote to the church and he said, if we sin, we have an advocate. He said, if we sin. But I am truly saying today, my desire, my way to live with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, when I don't let self reign or self motivate me to sin, I am going to identify to the fact I am dead to sin. I want to walk in the life of Jesus Christ. I'm also identified with the burial of Jesus. As the believer goes beneath the waters, he is identified with Christ's burial, and in a sense, buried with the Lord. The believer is saying, my past with my sin and disgrace are buried behind me. I am buried with Christ. I'm also identified with His resurrection. We have been identified with His humiliation and suffering, and now the resurrection. God raised Christ from the grave, and yes, someday He will do the same for us. But we experience the stirring power of resurrection life now even in our life of new life and new faith. And we're identified with being raised with Jesus Christ, the new life. We're identified and have unity with newness of life. A Christian should not and must not walk in the old ways of life. Water baptism symbolizes a definite change of life, aim, and style. I hear it today, you hear it in society. You can be a follower of Jesus and live like you want, but my friend, a disciple is a disciplined one that follows Jesus Christ. And those of you that were at camp listening to Brother Windsor's messages in the morning, it stirred my heart to be a follower of Jesus, to be a learner of Jesus. It's something that we're challenged to. Not just to have a wishy-washy experience and say I'm a Christian, but it's saying I have made up my mind. I'm a follower. I'm a disciple. Death to sin, self, and the flesh. It brings life, rest, peace, and anointing. I like some of the old hymns of the church. I like one that was written many years ago that says, Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. It's living a new and a holy life, it's an old life that's never to be seen again. We're raised to walk in newness of life. Friend, as I draw this message to a close today, remember that Peter warned and pleaded with the people. Those who accepted were baptized. Some of them repented and were baptized. 
Choices were made that day, and choices will be made here today. Now, when I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the Bema Seat, the believer who is cleansed by the blood of Jesus doesn't go to the white throne judgment. They are going to the Bema Seat. The seat of accountability and the giving of rewards. What brings one to that Bema Seat is having been washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and their sins being washed away and their sins are gone. They stand there as a trophy of the grace of God. However, when I stand at that Bema Seat, I want to stand there having been fully obedient to the Lord. I would not want to stand there having not been baptized in water or following Jesus and being His disciple to the fullest extent. Not to be saved just as by, so as by fire, but to stand here and hear Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You say, Well, Pastor Foster, I've got excuses, I've got reasons. I just can't do it. Well, let me give you two illustrations as I close. I mentioned earlier about sitting in church when I was 11 years of age. One of my duties at church at that particular age was that in our congregation there was a man by the name of Robert Windsor. I told this story a little birthday a few Sundays ago. Robert Windsor was one of the first men in Newfoundland and Labrador to be affected with polio. He was a paraplegic from his neck down to his feet. Robert Windsor would be brought into the church Sunday nights in a wheelchair. One of my duties as a young boy along with another young boy in the church was to sit with him Sunday nights. And when he grew tired, we would put our hands behind his head and, and move him forward and sit forward in the chair because, of course, his, he would be uncomfortable. Robert Windsor heard the gospel. He also heard about water baptism. One night in a water baptismal service, Robert Windsor, a paraplegic, made up his mind he was going to be baptized in water. Several of the deacons took him up in their arms. There was a walkway up behind the wall going up to the baptismal service at the front of the new church. It was hardly room enough for, for two men to, to stand together and hold someone between them. But somehow the deacons kind of got their backs to the wall and got Brother Robert in their arms and they passed them up the line, up the steps to the tank and the pastor and two or three other more deacons there took him in their arms and baptized him as a paraplegic in the tank by complete immersion. That was an exciting night. And I want to ask you this evening if Robert Windsor could do that as a paraplegic what does hinder you from being baptized? And identified with Jesus Christ. I told this story a little birthday as well. In town some time ago, a man was dying with cancer. He was down at the Pentecostal church, and water baptism is not about the Pentecostal church, it is a command. It's something Jesus said all believers should do. He did not want to die without being baptized in water. He called, had some family member call the pastor and said, Pastor, I'm dying, I know I only have a few short weeks left at the best, and I, I don't want to die without being baptized. Pastor said, I, I don't know, sir, what I could do for you. Let me think a moment. They didn't have a tank of the church. It was at a time of the year you couldn't have an open air service. But he said, sir, I'll tell you what. The first fine day we get, there's an old bathtub out back. And if you want to be baptized, I can baptize you in that. As long as you're completely immersed, you want that to happen, I will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Folks, to make the long story short, it happened. A few days after the man died, some thought he died because of, you know what, but he died because of his sickness. But when he died, he died in peace. There was no longer the fear hanging over him. I died. I know I should be baptized. Friend, this is a solemn place here this afternoon. Pastors, I feel the presence of God. Yes. And this is a hallowed spot at this very moment. Maybe today there's somebody here in this place. And the first thing you have not done is repented and accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
And he's speaking to you right now. You're hearing his call so distinctly. Repent. Repent of your sins that you were born in. Somebody's here today. You have never lived a bad life with a catalog of sins. It's simply the fact that you were born in sin and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior. Repent, Jesus says. He said, Pastor Foster, can I do that here today? Yes. And do you know all that there's people here that would pray with you right now? There's people standing by you and you just touch them and say, I want to give Jesus my heart. They'll pray with you there. And you know, I would even give a call here this afternoon that if you want to accept Jesus, come. Say, but Pastor, there's no chair, there's no altar. Oh, you see, what matters is that your heart bows before Jesus and says, Lord, be merciful to me. Come into my heart. Pastors, I don't know what you got planned in the next few moments, but I'd like for us to sing a verse of just as I am before I invite whoever's going to come and take the next part of the service. Because today I want to give an invitation first. That if there's somebody here that needs Jesus as their Savior, you'd accept Him today. Because that's what's so important in this moment of time. Could we just bow our heads together for a moment? I believe strongly in it call for souls and men and women, teenagers, boys and girls. I'd like for our heads to be bowed in this opening service. Is there anybody today within sight that I can see you? Anywhere in the sight of this service that right now as God's Spirit speaks to you, you would say, Pastor Foster, I have not given Jesus my heart or once I served Him and now I'm away, but You would just gently slip up that hand and take it down. I won't come where you are. I won't name you. I won't embarrass you. I'll just say thank you when I see your hand and you can put it down. Is there anyone within the sound of my voice or within sight today that you would raise your hand right now and say, Pastor Foster, I'm not saved. I need Jesus. I need to repent. I need the Lord as my Savior. Is there anyone that would raise their hand today and signify I need salvation? Could you just lower the music for a second, brother? And I want to ask another question. You may not be able to see me. I may not be able to see you. But you're sitting in a vehicle right now and you're listening to this message. You need Jesus as your Savior. Would you just toot your horn and say, Pastor, pray for me? I need the Lord as my Savior. That's not be the sound of a horn or the raising of a hand. But I still feel strongly that the Spirit of God is speaking into somebody's life today that you need to repent and accept Jesus as your personal Savior. I want us to pray together. And if you're near someone that you love and care about, they're not saved, I want you to invite them today to give their heart to Jesus as we pray. Father in heaven, this is a hallowed place at this moment. Your presence is here. Your Holy Spirit is here. We sense that the Spirit of God is calling people today to repentance and salvation. Lord, you know, in a moment of your carries, we're going to give a call for candidates. We're going to pray with them, and the pastors are going to lead them. But Lord, right now, for someone who needs you as their Savior, I pray the Holy Spirit will so convict them and grip them that they'll make a choice in this afternoon and make a public confession of the Lord as their Savior. They might get the strength and courage to do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Would you lead us, brothers, in one verse, and then we're going to give the second part of this altar call.
Brethren, would you pick up the notes to where he leads me? I will follow. Sinner friend, you can make the choice to accept the words of this chorus to where he leads me. I will follow. Well, there are candidates here today that came with your decision made to be baptized. There are others, perhaps you made up your mind since you came to this service. What does hinder thee to be baptized? You're saved. Doesn't matter what denomination you're from, you're saved. You're, Jesus has washed you in his blood. What does hinder you? You say, Pastor, I didn't come with extra clothes. What a wonderful day to not have extra clothes. Couldn't have it any better than this. Couldn't have it any better than this. In days like this, when I, I've been somewhere and I wasn't prepared for a swim, but I tell you, I went for one. But today I'm talking about something very spiritual and significant. Water baptism. You say it ruined my clothes. No, it won't. Never knew one yet that ruined the clothes. This is a spiritual, spiritual, significant happening when one decides to be baptized in water. So as they lead it, I'm going to pass it back to the pastors. But everyone today, from whatever church or denomination or background you're from, if you came here decided or you decided since you came, I'm going to invite you to step forward here for a moment this afternoon before the pastors lead you to the waters of baptism. Would you all come right now as they lead us in this verse together? Swift Current. Bless your hearts. Amen. That's two summers ago. What a time we had up there in the celebrations. Bless you to every one of you. We thank God for you. Amen, folks? Amen. Give them a hand. It's wonderful. Pastors, it's a wonderful day. Thank you for making, giving the privilege to share with you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's have a prayer with them and I give it back to the pastor. I just want to pray with these candidates. Lord, Thank you for these people today. Thank you for their decision. Lord, I pray now as they walk out into the waters of baptism that you will walk with them. And as these pastors and these call workers today, Lord, take this opportunity. Oh, just stir in their hearts. And I know you already have a thankfulness to those who said, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So thank you for the Thank you for this gathering today. What a privilege it is for us, Lord, to obey you and to do your command. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Can we uh, sing that chorus? Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. There's others here this afternoon that uh, need to make this step. Pastor Pittman is going to join me in the water, and I understand there's some from his congregation as well. Maybe you're here. It's time to take that step. It's time to walk down to these waters and follow the footsteps of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, it's a great privilege for me today to be able to stand and baptize my mom and dad. Amen. To be able to have privilege to baptize my little girl today in waters. It's a good thing when your old daughter comes to you and says, Dad, Mom, I want to follow Jesus. I don't want to be baptized in water. Sit down and talk with her and share with her about the following the steps of the Master and talking with her to make sure that she understood. And she said, yes, I do. I want to go. How can you refuse Him now? There's others here. Let me encourage you as we come to the water's edge. Uh, will you join these people this afternoon? There's some in... In Hillgrade Assembly, I know that yet has not made that step, and you're here and you're you're wondering today. God loves you, and God wants you to follow Jesus uh, every step of the way, and this is one of those steps. And let me encourage you to do that this afternoon. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Sister Audrey to come, and she's going to sing those words as well. And Hallelujah, Sister Audrey. Just sing the first verse, and then when we get in the water, just stop and. And we'll do the verses uh, separately, okay? So I'm going to ask Sister Audrey to come. I have decided to follow Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. And as we come, uh, will you make your way down to the water's edge and join me there today? Hallelujah.
Carly Gibbs is the second. These young ladies have uh, decided to follow Jesus to the water of the baptism.
It's been a great privilege today to uh, baptize Daisy Rice. We came last year. And this one year we have been here, in just over a year now in the grade, that we have had the privilege of seeing God save an entire family of a mom, of a dad, rededicated mom, a daughter, and two sons, and one of their sons of white. We've seen them all come to Jesus Christ, and we give the God praise today that he saved the entire family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Daisy, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
coming a few weeks ago. Came to Jesus Christ and gave her heart to the Lord. The Sunday morning service. And it takes a great uh, a lot for her today to do this because she is extremely afraid of the water. So by doing this, she's taking a step today of faith that she's going to follow Jesus no matter what the cost is. So I thank the Lord for that today. Hallelujah. 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 Take off my cross and follow me. 
Sacrifice when Jesus.